Okay, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast. It has been a minute since we've done an episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast, and it's great to be back. Uh, as we're in the midway of the summertime, haunt season is around the corner, and I thought it'd be great to bring back some of my awesome friends who come and bring these nightmares to life every single year, whether it's at Universal Studios, Six Flags, Knots, it doesn't matter where it's at. They're bringing nightmares to life, and they're, they're scaring the living hell out of us. And today, this guest is like no other. Uh, you will know her today as M. How you doing, M? I'm great. How are you doing? I am doing fantastic. I am so glad to be sitting here and talking with you. Uh, for starters, if you guys don't know M's work, uh, she most recently, this past year, uh, was uh, one of the talented monsters over at Six Flags Scream Break. Uh, specifically, because I will never forget this character for sure. Margot Rita. I was friends with Margot Rita from uh, April to March at Six Flags Magic Mountain Scream Break. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, that right there, I, 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 I remember walking in not knowing what was going to happen. I didn't know how they were going to do this. I didn't know what was going to happen. All I know, all I know was it was a, a Halloween take on, on Spring Break, which I was like, okay. I'm four. Six Flags is out here doing big things. They're changing the haunt world. They're trying to make this. They're trying to give us more year-round experiences. Love it. Uh, we show up, uh, and you know we're getting. We 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 got in. We got our food. We got our drinks, uh, and then it's time to go and and have some fun. We walk straight to uh, your zone first, which was the only area that had the two mazes, which was awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And it was just a vibe. I mean, there was. <laughs> I, I could not – there's no way of really explaining it to you to you guys as the audience uh, it, as much as I could because I could not do it no justice. Like you have to be there to see it. Uh, I know we filmed some footage, and, and I got a lot of footage that I still even haven't released yet that is just so wild and out there. But talk to us about the process of that. Talk to us of how it was getting in, how the excitement was for this event, and, and what it was like day one. Yeah, so um... – I had done my first year at Fright Fest in 2021. Right. Um, it was like Fright Fest proper, so like, you know, regular haunt season. And I was in Aftermath. Um, and I won Maze Actor of the Year there for Aftermath. Nice. Um, so the next year, they had me as a, a friend of a walk around in the front zone. Like, I went from being in a maze in the back of the park to, like, the, the main gate zone. Right. And so it was very nerve-wracking, but it was super, duper fun. So... It, I think it around January, February, March, um, like February, they started contacting some of us saying like, hey, we want you to audition for something. Um, and they had contacted me specifically for uh, a hosting position, so to be on stage and run games with people. Uh, but when I got there, I was like, you know, I think I want to, like, I kind of want to audition for, um, you know, the characters. Right. Uh, and I did. And, you know, they gave us a rundown of, you know, this is the name. This is some funny little things about the character. Go. Uh, and I was in a room with, like, five other people all doing, you know, the mother looking for her son. Right. Uh, and then I got contacted a week later. They're like, hey, can you do this? And I was at a steampunk convention. <laughs> and I had to step outside. I was in, like, full, like, robot outfit, makeup, everything. I was like, oh, hold on, guys. So I was in the middle of a teapot racing competition. And so I walk outside. I'm like, hi. I'm like, hey, can you do Scream Break as a character? I screamed. Some steampunks came outside. I was like, are you okay? I was like, ah, I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I just got the phone call, which I wish I could tell you, but I'm not allowed to tell you yet. <laughs> no, it was like, um, I just, you know, something cool is happening. They're like, okay. <laughs> Uh, so it was pretty fun. And then uh, the first day, you know, we met the, the makeup artists and we got to hear all the concepts and stuff. Uh, and then we just kind of jumped into it on the first night. Uh, it was super fun. Uh, everybody got, uh, at least in Demon's Row, uh, we all got names that were puns. And they gave us like a basic des description of what they wanted the characters to be. But the rest of us just kind of like ran with it. 
Uh, so yeah, that was basically what it was like getting started for Screen Break. <laughs> oh my God, Screen Break, it, it was a vibe. Um, now, before we get into the madness that is Screen Break, that you know, I want to, I would love, I want to hear your perspective on this. I want to see how the season was for you. Uh, I, I do want to talk about, I, and I, what I should have started with, but I just, I get too excited with these things. Um, <laughs> What I should have started with is, is what was the, the, the main spark for you that, that drew you to the, to the world of Haunt? Oh, wow. Um, so <laughs> it's kind of a silly story. Uh, I come from a background of acting. Okay. Um, I've been acting since I was four years old. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, I've been acting for 16 years now. And I had just gotten out of high school and I was going to my community college. Uh, and I just kind of randomly one day I was looking at my dad and I was like, can I audition for Fright Fest? <laughs> he was like, yeah, sure. So I did. And I just, it was cause it was like an acting job. And I was like, yeah, I, I just, I want an acting job, yeah. like an actual that pays. Uh, and it was my first job like ever. Nice. Uh, yeah. So I've been working there since. Uh, and I, just, I keep coming back cause it's, it's acting and it helped me realize that this is what I want to do. I want to make memories for people and I want to make people happy. Most right. of all, that's the big thing. Like I just like making people happy and I like seeing people get excited over these events and all this stuff. And I'm not even into horror. I'm so scared of horror. <laughs> I've, I've only seen two horror movies. What are those, even two, then what I have, are those two horror movies that you've seen? Uh, the shining. Okay. I watched it. Masterpiece. I watched it because, yeah, I watched it because I needed to see what the carpet pattern was for a, a dress. <laughs> <laughs> and then I watched uh, Psycho. Uh, I mean, I mean, I had- if you just give anyone those two answers, you're okay. Those are like top tier, like <laughs> top of the list horror movies right there. You got Alfred Hitchcock classic and Stanley Kubrick classic, two great directors. So you're good. Yeah. I had to watch Psycho for a, a media aesthetics class. And I was like, oh, this is, this is. Hitchcock is interesting. That, and that's just, that's the first time we ever gotten introduced to like slasher horror right there. Yeah. <laughs> like it's so historic. I was like, oh goodness. Yeah. Like I'm not a horror person, though. So. Now you go to Universal like, Studios I, and see it all. You're just like, oh my God. You know, I have never been to any other haunt except for Fright Fest. Oh, wow. I know. See, like this is what I mean. Like I wasn't even like a horror person or anything. I was just like, I want to do this because I want to make memories. And <laughs> now this year. This year, I'm planning on going to Knott's Scary Farm and, and Universal Horror Night. You chose the right yeah. year to go to Knott's. This is the 50th. It's going to be huge. Oh, wow. 50 years. Well, this you know what? The haunt that started it all. Really? Well, it's it's Fright Fest uh, 30th. 30th, this year. yeah. And I was I was shocked. I'm like, we got the 50th at one park. We got the 30th at another. It's going to be a whole vibe this season. It's going to be wild. It's going <laughs> to be nuts, man. I mean, that's that right there, I mean – and I hear a lot of stories about that. People either just love coming in to come in because they just like to scare people, uh, but they're mm-hmm. not fans or they're just not they're they're not into the horror world as much. But then as they start getting into this, you know, and start coming to the events, start working the events and stuff, they're kind of going like, "Oh wow, there's a whole new world out there. We just gotta kind of see what's up." I mean, that's how it was when I when I was getting into this world. I was like, "Oh okay, there's more than just action movies and 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 John Hughes movies. There's." F- there's a whole world out there of just other like horror movies and stuff like that. And I've always been into like psychological horror video games. Right. Um, like I love like Alice Madness Returns and like games like that. So now I'm sort of like, okay, it's not as scary as I thought it'd be. I, I'm, a, I'm a big person. I can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. A hundred percent. I, I, I. Mm-hmm. I love uh, just I, I love the I love to hear stories like that, especially um, because you're not the only one out there that who is an actress coming up and wanting to make memories and wanting to leave your mark on things. I've I've talked to a lot of people who, in the in the time that you know September October comes around, this is what they do as acting gigs, and they just yeah. make so many memories doing this alone that it's just like mm-hmm. when it comes time to actually get the the movie gigs and everything, they're like. The reason why I did all that is because that is what I'm going to probably remember the most, making the friendships, the memories, everything like that, you know. That's what your second Work- family essentially. Yeah, working at Haunt is it's it's like you just join a family. When I was in Aftermath my very first year, I was really nervous because I didn't know any of these people and there was a bunch of people like, "Oh, yeah, this is my third year, you know, I've been in Aftermath three times before this." And I was like, 
so nervous, but immediately they were like, so you're new, right? Oh, that's awesome. You know, like, what do you do? And all this stuff. And I still talk to everyone from 2021 that I, I we made a group chat that's awesome. and we all still talk. It's, it's amazing. That's like awesome. me and someone from that maze from 2021, we're going to like a LARP event in August. Like that's awesome. It, it's yeah, it's absolutely like, it, it's beautiful, honestly. I, I, I didn't think people who look so scary with prosthetics on could be so nice when, you know, you're all, like, chilling out. It, it's it's really sweet. And for those who don't know what LARPing is, that's called live-action role-playing. It is very fun. I highly suggest it. Mm-hmm. Because it, it, you could still, still role-play when you're an adult. It doesn't end when you're a kid. You can go for as long as you <laughs> want. I'm a huge fan of it. As long as you have fun, that's as all As long really as you have. have the heart and that, that little – that little kid soul is, you know, your little kid soul is still in you. You got it. You know, that's all you want. Just bring out your inner child again. That's all it's about. Oh, man, that's awesome. Uh, so, yeah, 2021 Aftermath. That was Actually, ironically, 2021 was the first year I ever attended the event. Um, wow. So I, 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 I came to the event because my friend Trix, who was uh, in um, – I'm still trying to remember the scare zones, the, the the clown scare zone. What is that one called? Yes, I know, I know tricks. Yes. Yeah. Uh, she's a very dear friend of mine. I consider her a sister, and she mm -hmm. was the reason why I was like, okay, I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna see what what your how you it is what you play out there. Uh, yeah. I see her at all these events, you know, and she's she's still herself, but I want to see it when it's on to a full ten. Usually at the event, she pulls it down to about a five or six, and. As as she should, as she, you know, there's people around. As she's selling merch and stuff, so I get it. But at the event, mm -hmm. I saw her at a freaking ten, and man, yeah. And then I was introduced to the Exile Brothers. I was introduced to to Green Clown, um, some mm -hmm. of my good friends to this day too, too. And and I love them each. And then I got to experience just the world of what it is at Fright Fest. And and I have to say, and I'm not just saying this because you're on there, but Aftermath probably was my all time favorite maze, and still is my favorite maze at at Six Flags Fright Fest. It is, I have such a soft spot for Aftermath and for Fright Fest as a whole. Um, I moved out to California in 2017 and my first friend I ever made in California immediately was like, we should go to Fright Fest. I was like, oh, I'm not, I'm not good at getting scared. And they're like, no, 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 no. You'll like it. And I fell in love with it. Um, I remember going through Aftermath and like, the way they set up the maze, you get so disoriented. And then there's that the horn and and the people yelling. And I'm a sucker for story. Yeah. I love story. So when you're in the queue line and you see Doc Mufumi talking to you, being like, don't worry, we're going to solve this crisis. And you go through and you see the effect of the crisis. And you end up where everyone's saying, go to the hazmat tent and find Doc Mufumi. Doc Mufumi has the cure. And you get to the hazmat tent and there's no one there to help you. Oh, I I love Aftermath. And every single maze at Fright Fest, every single scare zone has that much love and attention poured into the story. And that's that's like my biggest thing. Like, I just, I love story. So getting to work someplace that they just care so much about, you know, like like people like me, like like when I'm a guest and, and, and they care about us seeing the story through the characters through the, the Q line boggles my mind. It's just, it's uh, so magical. You don't got to sell it to me. I'm a huge sucker for story. <laughs> I love when I get to be, be immersed into what I'm about to walk through. Uh, and, and they really like to include you as you're playing a part in this role. Uh, it's part of the reason why I love going to haunt so much is, is because you get so immersed and included into these stories and then you get out and you're just wanting more. And, <laughs> You know, Six Flags is no shy of that. I mean, they, they do that with a, a lot of their mazes that they have there. I mean, you have one where you're pretty much like a ghost hunter, which is yeah amazing. Um, <sighs> one where you're exploring uh, sewers that have, like, toxic radiation in them. Amazing. Right. You know? Uh, Aftermath, where you're going through these ginormous sets, uh, fire coming out, horns going off, just loud noises everywhere. Mm -hmm. t different turns that trick you to go one way when you're supposed to go the other. Um, super immersive right there on its own. You have Vault 666, which literally teleports you to hell with hell's mm -hmm. greatest collection and tortures and all that. That's awesome. Condemned, they take you through an actual rundown house. I mean, 
the list goes on. It, it's just, it, you know, and not to mention these scare zones, um, which brings me to when I actually remember first meeting you. And it wasn't until, like, we started following each other on Instagram. I'm like, that's who she was. That's why she, I kind of look, it kind of sounded familiar a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we first met, and I believe the scare zone was called Devil's Triangle. The Devil's Triangle, yep. Yes. And we had the show. The Devil's Triangle was new for 2022, brand new scare zone, mm-hmm. uh, a brand new area for the front, uh, which I think in all honesty with the fountain beating right there to kind of give it that water vibe, it was perfect. It's perfect. And I, I'm such a nerd when it comes to this. When we got to see the zone for the first time and I heard that they had the the bubbling water sound and the very faint siren singing and just it. Oh, my Lord. It was just so like because this is again, this is my first year being not in a maze. It was just so magical. And I had so much fun there every single night. Oh, and the story. Yeah, ah! story's great. I mean, and I. And, 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 I know from you, obviously, from, just from telling from you, from you know, with that actor background, I come from high school. In high school, I have a, a theater background. So for me, it, it's it, like you said, story and immersiveness is just it's that's that's what sells it for me. That's why yeah. I'm so happy, especially when it came down to Devil's Triangle, it came down to Spring Break, Screen Break, um, that your characters and everything were interacting with us. Like I think I had more interaction in that zone. It screen break that night than I did with any other zone, and I'm not saying that no other zones gave me interactions. I'm just saying whatever guy, whatever juice you guys are drinking in that damn zone, I mean it was popping. I kept want, I kept wanting. Well, let's go back to that scare zone. It was I'm, I was feeling a vibe in that scare zone. I think the scare zones are just not feeling it, but that mm-hmm. one, that's where I want to stay for the whole night. Screen break was truly a whole other beast. Uh, what I really enjoyed was that there's something for everyone. Yeah. There was for the people like, like us who, who love story and love interaction. There was demons row for the people who love classic haunt being scared, but also having that scream, a uh, spring break vibe. There was bloodborne. Yep. And then for people who were just looking for a party while also being scared, there was the grave. Yeah. I it truly, I, I, I bow down to the people who thought of, of the, the zones and the mazes for screen break. Cause the amount of thought that went into, all right, interaction here, classic haunt here, party here, just it blows my mind how much thought was put into everything. Yeah. Everything. I can't even believe it. And honestly, what made all of our nights was when people would come back from the other zone and be like, these guys at this other party said you guys were late. Like, there was a whole storyline between Margarita and Lazarus. Uh, Lazarus being the vampire who's over in Bloodborne and Margarita being Margarita oh, in yeah. Demon's Row. Oh, yeah. And how the two of them had a little little feud of Lazarus being like, well, our club is better. And Mark would be like, I don't think so. And people would come back at, at, at like bounce messages between us all night. It, it was just – and people would come back and be like, that was so scary over there. And be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it does seem pretty scary. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that. There she goes. Cameo right there. There's a cameo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> only, only partially. She's hidden. She's hiding. Hey, you know, she's got she's to get her beauty sleep too, you know? Oh, she needs she, she needs, needs a full 365. Five, next, next, you know, the next year screen break happens. She's up again. Already margarita in hand, filled to the brim. It's good to go. Ready to party. Ready yeah. to just bust some moves. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> That, now that's, but I, what I found cool about it, too, was for you, at least, uh, within that that kind of, I wouldn't even say year span, within that month span, you kind of relatively got to explore that area relatively, you know, pretty good. That whole 2022 Halloween season, you got to explore that front mm-hmm. area, and that whole mm-hmm. screen break season, you got to explore that kind of side area, which are pretty much yeah. essentially the, the two – main portions of, of fright fest if anyone has ever been it's where you get a majority of the scare zones where you have a majority of the mazes located um how was that kind of transitioning to kind of like okay we have this space and now we have this space let's see how we can make this work uh for me it was incredibly easy just because again i come from a theater background and i specifically come from a theater background where i'm usually like a swing so i have to pick up things very quickly right um but it was very easy for me to figure out 
the space. Uh, I think the only difficulty was like, you know, the bar line that we had where I had to be like very mindful of not to go too far into the bar. Um, I think what was harder was the uh, dichotomy between regular Fright Fest and then the Scream Break Demon's Row scare zone specifically. Right. Um, going from Devil's Triangle, which was oh, a beautiful zone. Very beautiful. But all of our characters were very, they are very dark or sad or very like, you would look at them and go, that is terrifying and horrifying like your story and like you as, as a creature and then going to demon's row was like you guys look terrifying but you're a bunch of nerds at a party who are talking to us <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out how to maintain that fright fest feel in demon's row was kind of a learning curve but it was it, not like a learning curve that took months more like two hours i really got to hand it to the management team because they gave us so much information on this is what we want this event to be. And it was just very easy specifically for me too, to just pick up and be like, got it and run right. and figure it out. Uh, so figuring out the, the, the spatialness was easy, but the figuring out how to bring that screen break um, feeling and that screen break signature was just a tiny little learning curve that was easily aided. And and as an actor, that's got to be something that's always presented the the fun challenge for you is is how do I go from being this creepy kind of sad character in 2022 to being this kind of creepy but hysterical character at Screen Break who you know loves to drink, loves to encourage people, loves to you know <laughs> vent about certain characters, certain individuals that are giving them trouble. You know, like I I, I really like that because when when we talked to you in 22. For 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 uh, fright fest, I remember you going on about this this. We went through this cave, and you're like, "This is my house, and this is that, and this is this, and this is that." And I was like, "This is our landlord." Yeah, who's done. like you gave us a whole like ten to fifteen minute interaction, and then not only that, you had other people come in and got involved in it. I had my friends come in and get involved in this and this, this stuff, mm -hmm. and it was just this whole kind of fiasco where eventually we started forming a little crowd, and we're like. Okay, I think we need to back up now. That way, no one clogs us, and that way, you guys are good. We're okay, you know. And that was just kind of the whole thing. But and then I remember at the end, like I, I said something that was like it sounded like magic related, and you started losing your shit. And that's when the the scene just ended. And I was like, okay, well, this, I'm like, this is such a good start to the event, and we haven't even really got started. We just we just ate. Now we're this is like we're coming out, and this is it. Like it's a good time <laughs> set right here. My my goal with being a friend of Winona, uh, which was what that colonial maid witch's name was, right. was to f cause a distraction that was creepy enough for that the other characters to come through and scare the daylights out of people. Or I would scare the daylights out of people because I ended up, uh, my favorite thing to do working at a haunt is to find a new like scare every weekend and perfect it. It, it keeps it fresh. It makes sure that no one can predict you especially like guests. So one of the things I would do is like the, the lure and trap. Right. So like, I would like, Oh, yeah, this is my house. And this is our landlord. Yeah. And then at the very end, any, anyone mentions anything that has to relate to anything in my backstory that I made and just flip it like a switch and immediately just go after you guys scaring you. Yeah. Um, and it, 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 it did seem to work a lot of the time because people would trust me and then they would be terrified. Um, but then when it came to screen break, I was, <laughs> uh, it reminded me of like a, like an English panto or some sort of like Commedia dell'arte, like from, from traditional theater of where you have the, the fool who is just very silly. And then you have the straight man, right? There were so many of us in that zone that would be the fool or would be the straight man. Uh, and it was very easy. I got to give it up to the people in my zone because very few of them came from acting backgrounds, but they fell into these like beautiful tropes that worked perfectly for interactions. Like, like it was nothing. Yeah. Like it was natural. And all of us just ended up like within the first night of working together, just perfectly interacting and figuring out like these different tropes and roles. And that happens at haunt so often, but specifically with screen break, where we had to talk to people. We had to interact with people. It, it was beautiful. Really? Um, so it was so 
fun, truly, to go with what I know and see everyone else also going where I was going, being like, okay, I'm not crazy. We're all going the right direction. <laughs> no, I, I, I absolutely thought the cast uh, in that zone was just hysterical. Uh, from, and, and, and like you said, some people can, some people, like you said, that didn't have acting backgrounds and just kind of took it and ran with it too. I mean, yeah. I, I, I really love the stereotypes that you see in typical scream, you know, mm -hmm. spring break movies or, you know, how, how pop culture mm -hmm. depicts, you know, spring break. I really love, you got the stereotypical jocks and the stereotypical, you know, cool guys that hang with the jocks and they're all trying to hype people up about partying and how many beers they can drink. You know, you got, dare I say, played very well as well. The crazy old lady who's uh, drinking her margarita and trying to sell everyone on this person is bad because of that. And this person said this to that. I loved it. You had the cheerleaders. You had, you know, you had your bad boys. You know, you had everything. And it was the, the, mm -hmm. the it, it was it was like we took a John Hughes high school movie and added just some mo makeup and monsters to it. Exactly that. And I, I love John Hughes films. I, I do and too. And so, oh, John He's brilliant, a brilliant, right? Brilliant, brilliant. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. And so it was so fun seeing how the creative team made these characters and we immediately knew what, like, quote unquote, John Hughes trope they were supposed to fall into. Um, and it was so fun because I think everyone's at least seen one John Hughes film. I'm like, if you haven't seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off, I don't truly know what you're doing. If you haven't seen 16 Candles, The Breakfast Club. Oh, 16 Candles. Oh, Breakfast Club. Yeah. Come on. You have to see it at but, least once. It's a brilliant movie, yeah. but like that was that was also like a really magical moment. It was like, oh wow, we all we all like have the same, we all know what we're doing. Like we all have a, a same point of reference. Yeah, because it's very rare that you find something that everyone knows. Because we have people from different generations, from different backgrounds. So to find something we all knew, we were like, "Yep, yeah, we're going with it." Yep, which it was, oh, it was magical and brilliant. I know. I I I'm. So, it makes me happy when I see people that still can recognize those movies and whatnot because mm -hmm. i feel like those movies are just so embedded with cinema history that it's like if you haven't seen at least one john hughes movie then have you really seen any movies <laughs> have you like you know, i, I think like, you, need to, you need to sit down like, like weird science dude just watch it i you know what's funny is i watched weird science because uh my favorite band is oingo boingo right and I was like, oh, this song has has a movie named after it. It was the other way around. But, <laughs> you know, when it, when when Weird Science came on, Danny Elfman started singing. I was like, I know this guy. <laughs> I know Elfman, man. <laughs> Elfman is just a genius, too. Fantastic. Yeah, just, but, you know, yeah. uh, there was one night that um, Margot was going off on a drunken, like, conversation with someone. And mentioned, like, oh, I look like the girl from Weird Science. And someone in the audience was like, oh, and they mentioned the actress's name. And in my brain, I had to like go through my little role decks, like, do I know the person? Yes, I do. And I was like, exactly, you know what I mean. Oh. And just did a dramatic toss and walked away. It was, it was, uh. and you know, what was fun was Demon's Row, it was kind of like people could guess if we were from like the 80s or the 90s or now. So it was like we could make references from stuff and people were like, I know that, I yeah. think. And if we didn't, we would make references to a different decade. Yeah. And, that was what I think was also really well done was that we were able to get a bunch of other generations to know what we were talking about and have really good like conversations with every generation. Oh, it was great. I, I, mm -hmm. I just loved, even when we had the moments of us just kind of standing there and you guys not interacting with us and you guys doing your own thing, I was just having fun watching that too because I was like, mm -hmm. I know how my reactions are to some of the things they say. I would love to see what everyone else thinks when they just come up to them and hit them with something. Because, like, to there me, was, I, I've talked to so many people. I know so many people. So, to me, it's just like, okay, this is going to be fun. Let's see where this goes. Like, but then to everyone else, they're just like, wait, what did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> there were um, multiple people that had just amazing interactions with Margo that I'll never forget. Like, there was this group of girls who kept, like, came back a few nights. And they always brought these sunglasses. And they would wear them the exact same way that Margo wore hers. And they were the sunglass sisters. And we would have interactions like that. Meanwhile, other people wouldn't even notice the sunglasses. You know, it's like you had a fan the, club then come every week to come support you. <laughs> there were That's a lot awesome. of people who came. There were a lot of people who came specifically asking for Margot. Wow. Uh, it was 
intimidating, but um, it made me happy to know that people were enjoying the event. Um, and that was just honestly, like I said, I like making memories. Yeah. And so I would get messages uh, to deliver to Margo at the end of the night and be like, you know, thank you for talking to my kid. You calm them down or, you know, thanks for interacting with us. We had a really like not great week, but you made it better. And, you know, that's that's why I work in theme park entertainment. And I, that's why I do haunts. Because I want to do that for people. I want to make them feel better and I want to make them happy. I love that. I love hearing that. I mean, that I could tell just from one interaction with you that immediately, again, like if I was having, if I was having a bad night that night, I could tell that one interaction would have easily snapped me out of it. You know what I mean? And it, it's great because, you know, I, I was in a great mood that night and then we met you guys and it just got better. The night just got better and better. And I remember walking out, talking to my friends, talking to my, my girlfriend. I was like, that was actually pretty good. I wasn't expecting that level of like goodness from six flags. That was good. Like I didn't know how this event was going to go. Like I was like, maybe it's going to be low budget. This is something they're testing. I was like, but no, they had three scare zones. They had DJs. They had two mazes open. They had a bunch mm -hmm. of themed food and themed drinks. Like, this is a this is a good starting stone for them. Like this, really, they they came in strong with this one, and I and I applaud them for that. All of the actors that were first screen break were also incredibly talented as well. I, the The event was just so beautifully done, and that's something that um, we have more events going on at Six Flags, and they're all beautifully done. Uh, Flavors of the World right now has seven different pavilions that each have like six different or five or six different samples that you can try Damn. for food. Yeah. And it's it's in incredible. And they're doing more events like that. And it, it's it's honestly the attention to detail that the, the team puts into events is amazing. Yeah. And we're yeah. all so passionate. Um, every single one of the people in Demons Row, we're all just so passionate. I know there is like character Instagrams everywhere. Um, you know, Margo's Instagram had a bunch of like silly little posts just because we loved, we loved it. Yeah. We, we loved screen break and we all were so passionate about the event. And that's something that is so lovely when you're part of any production is everyone just being into it. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah, no, I, I agree. When, when everyone is on the same page, everyone's having a great time. You know, everyone's doing these, you know, just having a good, just having fun overall, you know, and everyone's in it. it it's just a better environment. It, it's easier to work with people. Uh, people are more open and willing to do more things that, you know, hey, tonight let's do this instead of this. You know, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, let's give it a shot. You know, let's go see what happens. And I, there are three characters that stand out to me every time I think of this event. That's the two, uh, we got the two jocks that were together with each other. Uh, that were hyping each other up. They were hilarious. And Margot Rita. Those are the three characters that I constantly think about. And I got the cups right here. Like, you know, I got it. I got I, I got, you know, I got them all. I got them on display right next to my uh, my tiki looking creature from the Black Lagoon. You know, so it's a whole it's a whole vibe right there. The, the creature likes to have a good time, mm -hmm. too. So, of course, he, he needs a spring break as well. Yeah. I, I think I think we forget that monsters need a spring break. Yeah, as well. I, I mean, he, I know he's in a lagoon year round, but he likes to come out and enjoy some sun, too. You know, it's like get him to the beach. Yeah, get, get him to the beach, my guy. <laughs> now we're going to just call it the creature from the beach. That's it. You know, that's he's of taking course, over. Creature from... <laughs> he's taking over. He's like, I'm done with the lagoon. I'm moving up. This is like a mansion to me now. I'm out of here. I want uh, I want sand in my toes I'm right now. I'm swim with the sharks. <laughs> But, I mean, no, you guys did a, uh, an incredible job, uh, and, and that goes for when I first saw you in 22. I may have even saw you in 21 not even knowing it was you because um, I did go through uh, Aftermath a few times mm -hmm. and going back in 23 for screen break. Now, looking forward to the 30th anniversary. Now, this is probably going to be a big one. Um, I know last year a lot of uh, old vets left. A lot of new people took over. Uh, you know, to, to continue it going. And I have to say, it was still an incredible, and I and dare I say, probably one of the strongest years I've ever seen at Six Flags. And I was, like, super impressed with everyone. I was super impressed for all the new people who got to go on streets, uh, super impressed for the, the maze talents and everything. They were all very good. They were all on point. Like, I was impressed last year. So looking forward to the 30th. 
what are your hopes? What are you looking forward to? What you know, what what what's in store for for the 30th for for you hopefully? Well, I would just like to come back and do anything really. I um it's going to be a lot this year because I'm transferring to a college to finish off my BA in theater um down in San Diego. Nice. So, I'm going to be driving up every weekend for Magic Mountain for Fright Fest. Um, so I will really just, I'll do anything because it means a lot to me. Um, Fright Fest does a, because it's an event that I truly love. I like, and I love making memories for people. I loved everything that Margot did for screen break with the, you know, the, the storylines that were built and all that. And I, I would just love to come back in any capacity hosting maze streets, like anything really. I'm just, I love this event so much. <laughs> I'm such like a like a fangirl about it. <laughs> that that makes me so happy when when I hear, especially what you just said. You're like, I'll come back and do anything. I just want to be there. Like, mm-hmm. I know some people who are just like, nah, I want to be on streets or nothing, or you know, it's like. <laughs> but you, you're just like, I just want to be there. Like, I don't care where mm-hmm. I'm at. You can you could put me in goddamn line control, and I'd still like it. You know, like that's how <laughs> I would feel. Like I, I'd be like, you could put me in damn line control, and I'd still find a way to enjoy it. I um. You know, after my first year of doing Fright Fest, I ended up doing a bunch of research into like all the mazes, all the scare zones, learned all the stories of each, started drawing from them. Like, I just love it. It, it makes me really happy. I was drawing a, like a territory twisted like fan character yesterday. Like, I just love it. I will be anywhere. I've drawn so much art of you know, Winona from Devil's Triangle, because I love Devil's Triangle. And I've drawn so much art of Margot and all of Margot's friends. Um, I, I I just, I love, I love where I work. That's it's awesome. makes me happy. And that's why I want to come back. Even doing the three hour drive from San Diego, I am more than happy. Like, I'm going to be listening to spooky mu- music on my way back up. There you go. I, I'm just pumped and I'm so happy and I'm going to audition and I'm going to just be anywhere they put me. Cause I just love it so much. That's, that's the attitude right there. That is the attitude. <laughs> I love to hear, love to see. Um, I'm super excited. 30th anniversary, six flags, fright fest. We're going to try to be there uh, opening weekend, but I guarantee you we're going to do, we're going to do at least one stop out there this year. Cause you know, it is a bit of a drive for us, but I will do that drive because that is a great event, and I want to go support my friends over at 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 at, at Fright Fest. Uh, I I can't wait to see. I know they got a panel coming up at Midsummer Scream this summer, so I'm super excited to see what they announce. Uh, any any, if you could guess as a fan from a fan point of view, what do you think? Anything they're gonna announce big for the 30th? Do you have any theories building up or anything? I have no clue. Like. I have, as a fan myself, I've just been keeping an eye out because I'm, I'm just so excited. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't know what they're going to do. And so I've been keeping an eye out, but truly, they could do anything. And I would I would eat it up. I'm just I'm saying, <laughs> let's complete the trilogy, Aftermath 3, baby. <laughs> you know, I love Aftermath Chaos Rising so much. And I, if they did anything with Aftermath, even like, a picture frame that I could buy, I would immediately, immediately it'd be mine. Bam, it's done. You know, something that's so fun is when I was working in Aftermath, I did a bunch of research into Aftermath 1, and I found out the whole story about like, you know, Diva and all of this stuff. And if you go through Aftermath 2, you can still see those influences from Aftermath 1. That's awesome. And like, again, as a fan, they care so much. It's just so lovely to see. So whatever they do for the 30th anniversary, I'm stoked. And I will gobble it up <laughs> here's a quick little synopsis i just thought about right as we're talking about aftermath 3 doctor it, you know we never got to see a doctor at the end doctor's gone long mm-hmm. gone so aftermath 3 he's gonna pick up where aftermath 2 left off and you're gonna go hunting for that doctor only this time when you find said doctor the cure is not going to be a cure the cure is going to be an ultra weapon much like how you see in something like resident evil or something and it's going to make this doctor and from a tiny little man to a giant monster that you got to pass under or buy just to finish the maze that's how you end aftermath right there i would cry tears of joy (laughs) like that big scene where the freaking fire shoots out that's where you have him just standing on top huge just like throw looking like he's throwing stuff and everything it'd be great 
that would be so cool. That sounds like like a darker rejected Pokemon game plot, and I love it. I'm oh, yeah. here for it. Yeah. It's it's final boss round, and we go big oh, or we absolutely. go home. <laughs> oh, abs- absolutely. It's going to be great. <laughs> but that that's just how I would love to see if they were to do an Aftermath mm-hmm. 3 and kind of complete that trilogy. That's mm-hmm. it. The final boss is the Doctor, and then at the end, Doctor blows up. Happily ever after. Or is it? That's what I was going to say. Or is it? Because you, so, you need something to keep it scary. There'll be a cliffhanger in there to maybe do a spin off or go somewhere else in a direction. But <laughs> that aftermath story would be wrapped up and we, we can go on from there. Six so Flags, that's, that's... bring me on the creative team, baby. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll write some stuff for you. <laughs> and I'll make sure she gets all the freaking starring roles. I'll make her the icon of the event. <laughs> No, 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 have me as mind control. Have me as Usher, I'll do it, I'll be an Usher. No, she's, she's very committed. She'll she'll do uh, whatever they, they ask her for. And I, and, I, and I appreciate that. That's awesome. To see your love for this community, to see your love as just your love for acting, just your love to, to, to make memories with people, to make people smile. Hell, to make them feel sad, to make them, however you, your character is supposed to make them feel, you as an actor, can do, you, you accomplish it. And, and and you've gone and done – I've seen you in, in Devil's Triangle. You've gone and done – that's one whole character compared to what I saw at Screen Break. Those are two different characters that I've seen you do. And I know you, you're – if I've seen you do two amazing characters, I know you're talented. I know there's more in the bag for more to come. I'm excited to see what happens for 2023, uh, whether you're, you're back in Devil's Triangle or whether you're – wherever you are in the park. I can't wait to see it. You'll know we'll be there to support um, – Telling you, I'm gonna be M the Usher. I'm gonna be sitting there like, keep going through the maze, please. Yeah, yeah. That's gonna be me. Best roll ever. I'd be like, M. <laughs> We're talking M! about this on the podcast next year, Usher. <laughs> I'll be here like, yeah, guys. Being an Usher this year, character creation for it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, he's like, this is the most method role I have ever. I had to be serious. <laughs> and I, it, I, it was. I had to go full method on this. Like, I had to. I had to take inspiration from other very serious boring people and it, it was the hardest role of my life but i did it i had to take inspiration from from you know trader joe's clerks with the keep the smile on their face yep. did, i went to a lot of <laughs> disneyland trips just to see how those employees uh you know how they get past their job with dealing with very annoying people all day but having to keep that smile on happiest place on mm-hmm. earth am i right <laughs> uh, i don't know sure. I, I think disney's about to sue somebody right now <laughs> well luckily this is a podcast about screen break. I know screen break, <laughs> right? Uh, but M, I, I have to say, uh, it was an honor to see you perform uh, at, at 2022. It was great to see. I got to also uh, do a shout out to my my one of my best friends, Hunter, uh, who was there that night. She, I I told her I was like, there is this character over there that I need you to go talk to because when you're in character for your character, cause she, she used to work at the queen Mary with, uh, and she did, she did Shacktober to fest. She used to do queen Mary's dark Harbor. Um, and she's super talented. Can't wait to see what she does this year. But when you were in character, you reminded me of so much of her, of how she is in character. And I was like, Hunter, you need to go talk to her right now because I feel like you guys are twins and it's kind of scaring me, but I have to see you two talk just so I could be like, okay, they're not twins, but they do act like each other, and I and I dug it. It was awesome. And you have to see if they can be in the same room with each other, or one of them will flow when it happens. <laughs> yeah, I got to get Hunter in character, and, and then I have to bring Margo it out of out of her long sleepy retirement right now, and and put well, him in the room. In, in order to do that, you have to make the recipe. You have to make her margarita to wake her up. It's like this this ritual that that Six Flags does to wake her back up from her slumber. I got candles for that. We need candles for the <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. You just need some margarita mix. You just really. need a lot of, yes. a lot of all the, the the basics and then just put a blender there and put it on the blender and then boom, she unblends from the blender. <laughs> you just need like, you know, a human sacrifice, which is, you know, me every year. You know, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a flesh wound. It's okay. In order to summer margarita, instead of a, a like, you know, have you seen Aladdin with the lamp? No, you just put a blender with all the margarita mix and then once you hit blend, she pops up. <laughs> she's like hi what can i do for you <laughs> she's back back i i'm so excited to see if they do that again next year too how you take how that character goes a step further than what we saw in the beginning this was just like we laid the foundation we got what we wanted to let's take it a step further 
intimidating challenge, but I'm up for it. Honestly, if they bring back Screen Break, which I would I would love to see as a guest and as a fan. Uh, well, I, I'm just curious to see how all of the people in Demon's Row, Bloodborne, Grave, they like step it up next year because it's it's it was such a cool event. And like, ah, I'm such a big fan of, of where I work. <laughs> I, I love it. I cannot wait. Uh, 2023 haunt season is right around the corner. Uh, mm -hmm. It's coming fast. It will be here before you know it. Next thing you know, we're going to be at Midsummer Scream covering that panel. And then after that, we're going to opening night to Fright Fest. It is right around the corner. The next major holiday yeah. is Halloween. Oh, yeah, it is. Wow, I didn't think about that. Let's let that That's sink in for a bit. The next major holiday you know, is Halloween. I've, you know, I've never been to Midsummer Scream. I think I'm actually just going to go buy a ticket now to go, go, go see everything. I highly honestly. suggest it. This is, if you've ever, I don't know if you've been to it, but I, I'm almost certain you know of it, San Diego Comic-Con. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the San Diego Comic-Con of horror and Halloween events. Oh, I'm excited. Tons of celebrities, tons of great panels. Um, there may even be some surprises. Hall of Shadows, they got mazes from Home Honors. Yeah. that will be fun. Yeah. I'm, I honestly, everything after, since since working at Fright Fest that first time and getting more into this, it's such a cool community. Oh, and it's just, it's so cool to like, be a part of and learn everything about and you know my little my little fright fest fan heart can't handle all of this coolness that i'm seeing from everywhere and and i, I i'm just so excited honestly well, for everything you yeah. know what I, I i for me i'm just so glad you accepted the invitation to come on to the show um i actually i have a habit of doing this you ain't i i, I have a habit of trying to get you in character i'm like i don't know if i'm gonna see you again so here's my card if you want to be on my show, I'd love to tell your story. If not, it's okay. Just thank you for everything. I do that to so many people, I, and it's like I'm so just happy you excited because you were literally one of my favorite people at Scream. I, I was so honored. Uh, you know, being Margot's handler, the human handler that's there to make sure she doesn't go too too drunk. Of course. You know what I mean? It, it's tr it was truly like I was sitting there like, oh goodness, this is like, this is a this is a big honor because I've never been interviewed for like anything big and fancy before so no, i know i know when you win the academy award i'm gonna look back on this and be like no there it is what you mean when i win the academy of eating the most pizza award right that's what we're oh, i'm going full we're... blown i i i don't know what the academy the academy should have been there at screen break because they need to nominate <laughs> this performance as best haunt performance of 2023 right there because and we haven't even gotten started with haunt season that's how much it impressed me that's it's definitely going to be up there for sure i can tell you that much Fright Fest, it, everyone is so into it, and I love Fright Fest so much. And they go hard every single year. And I'm because the 30th anniversary, they're going to go even harder. Like I cannot wait to see oh, what everyone has in store. And honestly, if I were if I were any other fan, I am a fan. But if I were anyone else, I'd be as excited as I am right now. <laughs> I'm excited. And when I found out this year it was the 30th, I was like, wait. You give me the fiftieth of knots, the thirtieth of freaking of Six Flags, and the Last of Us at Halloween Horror Nights. What did I do so Dude. right to deserve this? <laughs> the the world is smiling upon the haunt community right now. It really is. It really. And then Horror Nights this year, earlier this year, was like, oh yeah, by the way, we're making a permanent Halloween Horror Nights over in Las Vegas. So if you guys ever want to go get your haunt fix year round, you can go do that. I'm like, when is that opening? <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Ah, uh, you know. I, I I was so excited that they did Scream Break because like we were we were talking about was that it, it was like this perfect gap yeah. that needed to be filled and like ah. <laughs> it was a great halfway to Halloween event. Um, I perfect. know that another haunt in Thousand Oaks that does just one big maze that uh, it's called um, Reign of Terror. Um, oh. they do theirs. They do a halfway to Halloween event. They do their their haunt season and then they do a Christmas event. Um, and it's just a, it's a vibe. So when I saw that Six Flags was jumping on board to do a kind of a halfway to Halloween slash uh, spring break event, I was like, oh, can we get more people to jump on board with this idea? Like, this is genius. All I need is like two or three mazes to get me by for like another six months. And exactly. Good to and go. Condemned House Party and uh, Vault 66 initiation so cool really the fun. concepts how they played into the zone that was outside of their maze yep. we had so much to work with being like oh we you initiated in the front 
mm, I would do that and go to the after party. Like yep. it was just, Oh, I love, that's what I, I loved love. about. That's what I love about when I, and you, you guys do that so well. You guys are, are so good at storytelling that you will interact with someone for a good 20, 30 minutes and then you'll point them, hey, well, if you want to see this, like, you need, you need to go in there because they're having some weird, you know what I mean? Like, I love it when people are like, oh, we just had a 30-minute conversation. Now they're increasing the story by taking me into a maze. It's truly so easy to do that when you have an event that was so beautifully planned out and when you have a team that cares so much about the product that they're putting out, like, at Six Flags. Yeah. Uh, it's Six Flags Magic Mountain is such, like, they put so much care and it's so it's so magical and fun to see. A hundred percent. I I couldn't agree more. I was blown away when I came in twenty one. They did a great job. I came back last year. I came to uh um to Screen Break. I will be there for for this year and every year going forward. Fright Fest is part of the lineup. We have to go attend, man. We have to go see what they bring to the table. And I'm very excited every single year to go see what they bring to the table, especially being the thirtieth. Now, um, it has been. An absolute pleasure talking with you. I, I am super excited to see not only where you go in your haunt career, but where you go in your career career. I mean, being an actor, that's awesome. I I'm this, I love filmmaking. I love the process of filmmaking. I am a huge nerd for that. So I may hit you up to be a final girl one of these days. Who knows? I appreciate it. I mean, I'm even wearing like a final girl outfit right now with the sweater vest. And you everything. really, you really gave me some like get out vibes. I don't know if you've seen Jordan Pills get out, but like the girl at the I've, end. I've, I've seen like, I've seen like plot summaries of it. Cause I'm too scared to watch it myself. Yeah. But I've seen like the, the, the play by play of it. Uh, yeah, no, just the little final girl outfit. I wanted, to, I wanted to look very final girl. Since, hey. you know, I have to. You, you, you Listen. made all the Lori Strodes. You made all the, all the final girls out there. You made them proud today. I'm glad. You know, honestly, I feel like being Marco's handler is like a final girl situation. Uh, yeah. She's, I she's a that, lot to deal with. I, I, would, yeah. I would compare it to that or being kind of like a vampire's familiar. Oh, it's it's, it's definitely a... Like a what we do in the shadows you know, thing? <laughs> she definitely does leech off with me in that way. You know, <laughs> it, it is very much so like uh, what we do in the shadows where it's like, oh, one day I'm going to become a vampire. She's like, ha <laughs> No. <laughs> She's, she's, she's like, so no, fun. No. No. No, that's that's my job. Now go get me another margarita so I can go back to sleep. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Her recipe, man, making it is, is toxic. But <laughs> imagine it's costing you a fortune over here. You're like, hey, you gotta tell her like, hey, it's either you get a job or it's like you get no more margaritas. <laughs> it's like it rent ain't free she, around here. <laughs> she once said her job was to look good and drink a lot and you know yeah, she did do a really good job at that in the event, so you know, she's got an employee of the month every month because she's the only employee but you know hey fair win right fair win right <laughs> fair win. no one else competition you know might as well just keep giving yourself the title hey that's she made her own company at this point it's just <laughs> drinking in her skyrocketing her <laughs> she she's at the top of the food chain and the bottom <laughs> oh my god if uh if any of your loyal fans want to follow you. Uh, where can they find you on Instagram? I know you got the character page up and running. Yeah, uh, the at would be ff underscore Winona, as in like Winona W-I-N. Ryder. Yeah, yep. well, that is where I got the inspiration for the name. I like that. Uh, Winona Ryder in uh, The Crucible. So Winona Bishop, that's her name. I, too, am both strange and unusual. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lydia Deets. <laughs> I, love, uh, I can't wait for her to come back in Beetlejuice 2. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. I saw I got to see Michael Keaton as Batman and Beetlejuice in one lifetime. I, I don't know how I got so lucky, but I did. The stars are like this they right They are. Now. They're I, like, oh, you I... never got to see Batman in theaters in 89? I got you. Oh, you never got to see Beetlejuice when it got released? I got you. Here's I a sequel. You. And I was like, oh, and Tim Burton's coming back? Let's go. <laughs> I'm Growing up it. on Tim Burton movies, my little heart is like, bo-dum, bo-dum, yep. honestly. Tim Burton's there. <laughs> Speaking of movies, I have to ask this because I know uh, I, I am, I you know, I, it is a horror channel. And I, I know you, you did see that you've only seen like probably two horror movies in your life. But out of those two that you've seen, what was your favorite? I liked The Shining. I really enjoyed The Shining. Um, I, I'm, I, well, I can't say that because it goes for both. But... I'm a sucker for detail, as we know. And just the little hmm. references throughout the whole movie. Kubrick is no shy of detail. 
and same with Hitchcock, but yeah, I there's just something about The Shining that watching it, I would I got all giddy. I just because I had I obviously everyone's heard like what the story of The Shining is, but I was like I I don't honestly see what the hype was about. So I watched it and I was like, oh never mind. It's never pretty. Mind. I mean I Jack guess. Nicholson. That's all I gotta say. Oh, good dude. Oh my lord. The, uh, just I, fantastic. I, he's one of my favorite actors. I thought he he mm-hmm. killed it in that role. You know, of, of just being that, especially when he's doing the whole monologue going up the stairs and she's swinging the yeah. bat at him. Oh. Like, I remember memorizing that for a theater scene for like an assignment we had to do for a <laughs> test. And I was like, I was in it. Like, I, I, I legit, like, I had to go method. I went to a different place, a dark place. I was like, oh, no. Like, the teacher, like, after I was done, the teacher, like, because I had to stop for a bit and like get, snap mm-hmm. myself out of it. And the teacher's like, are, are you okay? And I'm like, I really got into that scene. <laughs> well, you know, What's crazy is, um, so um, first of all, uh, in reference to that, my friends and I quote the Wendy Darling. Yeah. We quote that all the time. It's like a joke, right? Light of my light. <laughs> I'm not going to kill you. Uh, we quote that all the time, right? But um, we were talking about the movie afterward. And there's all these people who will watch like the Red Room edit and all that stuff. And I'm sitting here like, I think the point of the movie is to make you feel like you're going insane like he was. Honestly, that's how I interpreted it. Because... You get so confused, and you end up being like, maybe this guy's in the right a little bit. And then you're like, wait, no, that's crazy. That's crazy. What am I talking about? There is a rabbit hole that you do not want to go down with this movie. And there is so much after watching it. like, Because I hadn't seen it. Like, I'll be honest. I watched it pretty late. But I I watched Mm -hmm. it, like, probably mid-2010s, maybe. Or maybe Mm -hmm. a little bit earlier. But after that, I just went on a rabbit hole on YouTube. I'm like, what does this mean? What does this mean? Why is that there? Why? Why is the moon landing stuff there? Did Stanley Kubrick actually direct the moon landing? <laughs> That's like ge- genuinely like it, it makes you lose your mind a little bit. And oh, that, yeah. I, it's so, it's very immersive as a movie. Yeah. And it's just so fascinating to me. I love immersive things like that. I highly oh. recommend the sequel to the shining. Cause I did make a sequel. I've been told, I've been told to watch it. Actually. Dr. I'm just Sleep. too scared to watch it. I'm too scared to watch it on my own. So I've got to, I got to wait until my friends are free. Yeah. And they were like, we're going to watch it with the lights off. I was like, no ma'am. So, so no, take in not. mind. And I, you probably know this. Stanley Kubrick hated Stephen King's book. So he changed, well, yeah. he changed a lot in that movie. Right. Yeah. Mike Flanagan comes in and does Dr. Sleep and goes, well, I really liked, I love Kubrick's movie, but I really love the sequel to The Shining and in the book form by Stephen King. So he goes, the first half is going to be dedicated to the love of Stephen King's book. The last <laughs> half, I'm paying straight homage to Stanley Kubrick. And I'm like, when I saw it in the, and it, just talking about it, goosebumps. Like, when you watch that that third act of that film, it is so like, Oh my God, he recreated a lot of things, and it's just wow, it's stunning. Yeah. And Ewan McGregor, Obi Wan Kenobi, he's so great in that movie. He plays older <sighs> Danny Lloyd, and it's great. I love, I love Obi Wan Kenobi. That's I love great. It. I love his actor, but you know, that's honestly, I'm excited to watch it because I'm a very big fan of psychological horror, as you mentioned, and The Shining was equal parts. I felt. Yeah. So, well, a lot of psychological horror. So was that a cat? I, I, Yes, that's my I cat loved. Clark. I'm sorry. I have cats too, and here, Clara. She's coming. I'll show you her. Her name is Clara Oswin Oswald. Clara, I like the name. Yeah, she's she like, I want to be on my... camera too. Oh, here hi, beautiful little kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> here she is. She is she's adorable. Being... She's always a nuisance. You know, I would come back from being Margot's handler all night, and there'd be like you know schmutz all over my face, and she would just kind of look at me and like. Who you are, are you? Crazy. <laughs> Who are you right now? You are not mom. She, she, and then she realizes it's me. She's like, oh, you're back. You left me here for eight hours. Oh. It was like four. It wasn't even that yeah. long. <laughs> I know the feeling. That we have me and my girlfriend, we, we, we have dogs. And when we're gone for like, when my, when my girlfriend gets up, my, the, the, the youngest looks at her and just gets up immediately. And she could just literally be getting up to get something and get back. And he'll jump down the bed, go to her, make sure she's not going anywhere, and then come back and go back and lay on the bed. Mm. And I'm just like, all right, that's how we're doing it. Yep. She is equal parts overprotective over me, but then also acts like I'm her cat. (laughs) She's, she's, she's a strange creature. Yeah. (laughs) I, I, yeah. Yeah. It's all right. We're, we, Hey, we're all weird, right? Oh yeah. She's, 
Yeah, but she says hello, Knights of Horror. That was her little scream. I love to. I'm glad she can have a little cameo on the screen, like Stan Lee, right there. <laughs> right, right there. That's gonna be the most uh, replayed scene on this podcast is when that cat comes on screen. It's it's the you know we spent this whole time being like yeah, Scream Break was awesome. This is all awesome. And then and it's the Clara. cat. She it's the like, biggest track. I mean, can't blame them. I mean, can't. it's Clara. You can't. You can't. <laughs> well. I, I am looking forward to the 2023 season. It's going to be great. You're going to be great. Can't wait to see where you go. You're going to have to let me know where you go, though, so I can keep an eye out for you. Um, I'll definitely post when I know. When you know. Yeah, when you can legally say it. I don't want you to break any rules, any NDAs. I just When you can legally tell me when you, where you're at, just so I can come and support. Either way, I'm going to go through everything. I'm going to go see everything. So it's Well, gonna be we, from the bottom of my heart as a fan, but also someone who works at Brightfest, I really appreciate what you do. Thank you. Um, as someone who who's been doing this for about like you know two years now ish, ish um, it always makes well doing theater as a whole really it always makes me happy when there's people who are as into it as I am who interact and I feel like that is my favorite thing ever so I I really appreciate what you do and I really appreciate your dedication your excitement it makes me happy to see that there's someone who's as excited as me and that there's someone who has a whole platform of people who are as excited as me oh yeah i i absolutely <laughs> love hearing all your guys' stories it's it's one thing to see it at the event as a guest it's another thing to hear it from different perspectives of how people mm -hmm. see things and how they interpret things and stuff so it's good to really uh, do these these shows because it gives the audience and it gives the fans not only um a behind the scenes look at what it takes to bring that character to life or, or, or get in the mindset of that character. But also it gets to see you guys as people, which I think sometimes yeah. there's a lot of people out there that forget you guys in the end of the day are people, you know, you guys are just people playing these monsters. You guys have everyday lives like everyone else. Like, you know, so there's, I'm just, I, I like to, I like to showcase not only the talent, but the people behind the talent too. So and like, they, yeah. I'm going to college and I'm doing all this stuff and I'm also Margarita's handler. So it, it's, 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 you know, as a fan who also likes to watch this stuff, it, it's very cool to be like, oh, they're people too. Because you get so excited and wrapped up and then you get even more excited because you're like, and they are so into it. And I don't know. It just, it, this whole thing just makes me so happy. I'm a very, excitable person so this is a, this is a very happy moment oh. for me well I, I i knew when we were going to kick off the season premiere of of mindless Sword podcast that this was going to be the first one i did because <laughs> we had been talking about this since way back in april and, mm -hmm. and you know i know there's you you've had um some some you know work come up so you had to you know you took care of some work that you had to take care of uh but when when work was done you you straight up hit me up and were like hey didn't forget uh work's done name a date and a place and we'll do it and i'm like how does next wednesday sound at four o'clock and you're like let's do it i'm like all right let's go i'm excited i kept it in my heart because i was so honored and so excited to come on here and gush about how much i love the event and my work and i was like i'm gonna keep this here <laughs> and once i was done with my shows and when i was done with you know my finals which took four weeks <laughs> oh, um, no. being a theater major your finals are four weeks long oh my god is it all just acting stuff it's acting. Like I was whole, sewing. It was a whole production you guys had to be take a part of? or Yeah, we had to. Uh, I was in a show uh, that was running the same time that Screen Break was. Like, we were doing. I would go from rehearsal to Screen Break um, wow. on Saturdays and stuff like that. What? what uh, how long were your days? I'm sorry. Now I'm getting into it again. I love this world. Uh, don't even worry. Um, uh, on Saturday. So, Screen Breaks ran Fridays to Sundays. And I had rehearsals on Saturday mornings from 9 a.m to i believe like four when i would leave to come to six uh six legs yeah and i was so pumped for both of those things i was a part of that those days were like honestly my favorites and we would stay until like midnight i believe or a little past it's been so long now i, I don't remember the hours but those days were my favorite because i got to go to the place i love most and then i got to go to another place i love most like I got to go to a theater and then I got to go work at my favorite place ever. Um, so a good, easily and, like a good, probably almost 12 to 14 hour work days, which if it's something that you love, Hey, mm -hmm. that's why I'm stoked that I'm going to school in San Diego. Cause I get to drive back. Like I, 
I'm so happy that it's it's a good drive because I love the drive to San Diego and I love Six Flags. So I get to drive on a drive I love to a place I love. I'm just excited. With and the tunes I'm, you love. With the tunes I love. It's just so happy, truly. So, you know, it, March and April were brilliant months for me because I got to be back on stage after two years during the pandemic. And then I got to, uh, like, I got to work at a brilliant event with brilliant people, and it, I loved it. And even now working there, I love it. And I'm so happy now. Like, after finding Fright Fest and working at Fright Fest, my life has just drastically improved. And I'm happy. And I am happy I get to make other people happy. That's great. I love hearing that message. Now, I promise you this will be the final question because I, no I know I've been saying that now and I know the audience is like, you said that like five questions ago and you keep asking more. What are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, because why I, is there a cat? Uh, you know, when I, when I, when I do mindless for podcast, man, I, I just get so into it and so off topic and so off track because I just get so excited talking to the people who, you know, like you, who just love to do this and who have a passion for it and who just have the excitement for it. It gets my energy going. Then then both of our energies are at a good place. Makes for a great show. And uh, so I promise you this will be the final question. And I and being that you've said now that you haven't been to really any other haunts other than Six Flags, I'm assuming you've probably maybe heard of some or maybe seen clips on YouTube of some or, you know, in that aspect. Now... That being said, is there any haunt, if you had the opportunity to scare out for one night, that you would go and, and have a, a fun time doing? That you would love to do for just, just one night? Like current in 2023 or could it be? It could be any haunt from the past or, or mm. something that's coming up in the future or something that you've seen that you're like, oh, man, I would just love to just see how that is for a night. If I'm being honest. And I'm not just saying I'm not just saying this because I know it's gonna sound like I'm just saying this. I would love to work. Oh, five percent battery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. I, <laughs> it's fine. I have a charger. I would love to work at. And I know it's gonna sound like I'm just saying this, but I love the people there. I would love to work at a scare zone that used to exist at Six Flags, called uh, Witch's Lair. Okay. I would love to work there because it was like a maze and a scare zone. There's a lot of stuff you could play around with on that. And you got to be witches. You got to scare people as witches. Um, but if I had to choose something that wasn't Fright Fest, probably. No. I really don't know because they're all so cool. They are. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I think it would just be. I I don't really know. I think everyone's super cool. Toughest and I question think, of the podcast right there. Yeah. Wow. That really is tough, huh? I think only for one night because I don't think I have the mental strength to work <laughs> there. I, I would love to do stilts at Halloween Horror Nights. Ooh, I, you know what? I know a and person. I know a person. <laughs> only for one night because then I would run back to Fright Fest and I'd be like, I'm back. <laughs> and I would put on my little witch outfit and be like, let's go. And be ready to go. And then they look at you and be like, you're still on stilts, though. Let's still go. I'm still going to go out there. Yeah. They'd be like, did you run all the way from Universal Studios to Six Flags on stilts? You can't prove it. I know I'm sweating off everything, but you can't prove it. They'd be like, no, I didn't run. I hitched in the back of a truck. Yeah. There's a difference. Okay. You think I could really got, I You think I really got here in 30 minutes walking? <laughs> <laughs> you Basic, basic podcast. I'm only sweating because I had to run down the hill to get off with these stilts, hitched in the back of a truck. Now I'm here. Let's get to work. Now I'm here and I'm ready to go. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Em, it has been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I'm glad that we finally got to do this. And I look forward to uh, – I can't wait to see what, what what happens with you this year. It's going to be a fun one. I'm super stoked for it. I know the, the fans are super stoked for it. Uh, I'll say this right now. Whether we get to see Margarita or ever again or not, I will say I will never forget that event. I, I pray that Six Flags brings that event back for next spring break, um, being that it was a huge success. Um, I'm hoping they bring it back. But if they never bring it back, I just want to say from the bottom of 
my heart and the heart of the channel. Thank you so much for bringing that character and helping bring that zone to life. I know you, am amongst your entire cast and crew, uh, worked your guys' asses off to bring that. Had some of the most best, funnest nights ever. I thank you guys so much. That will probably be some of my favorite memories of Six Flags uh, ever with, with Haunt there. So thank you guys for that so much. I will never forget that. Thank you for coming and being so into it and for having me on uh, so I can gush about my favorite thing ever. Um, and if anyone who's listening to this wants to go to screen break but is too nervous to talk to the characters, I promise you we don't bite that hard. Just a little some love nibbles. Are. It's just because they're excited exactly. to see us. Just... Listen, some of us are vampires and we need something, okay? But, like, we love you and you can never be awkward or have a wrong interaction with us we don't judge you we're happy you're talking to us and having a good time and i think that goes for anyone that was at that event not just demons row not just me we're happy that you're there and we're happy you're happy and we just we want to talk to you we want to interact with you and it was a vip event that we got to interact with you with it's regular fright fest the monsters are monsters and they will bite you and they do not talk so if you come to Screen Break, have fun. Have fun anywhere you go. But if you come to Screen Break, if they have it next year, have fun and talk to the monsters because we love you. I'm going to have a full-blown video next year if we, go, we get invited back or I'm just going to go when we go back um, of just interactions. We're just going to tell a story and see where it goes. Do it. Do it. You could – we, if you come to screen break next year, if there is a screen break next year and you talk between the zones and pass messages, best way you could do it really. Cause then we have re interactions with you. We have interactions with them. You get to see, you get to see a bunch of dynamics between characters. You can't go wrong. I'm going to anything you do. I am personally going to buy Margo a referee t-shirt, a whistle and some yellow <laughs> flags and see what she does with that. How many penalties she'll call on people just for. We've done that before. 2021, I brought it to the Exile Brothers, and they just started calling penalties on people in the zones. And I was like, this worked. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what else we can do with it. Margo, if you're up for the challenge, you're next. You know, Margo, as, as her human sacrifice, please help me. Um, you know, as her human sacrifice, I could say that she would probably have a lot of fun with that. Um, She'd be throwing but I think penalties at people just not even – just to throw them at people. I think, yeah, I think Margo would be throwing penalties at people for just for no reason. Or if, if you know, as her sons like to say, just sipping on your drink. It's not a baby butt, you know? So uh -huh. I think that, that she would give the penalties to some of her sons because they know this stuff better than her. Yeah. And she would take some of them and be like, okay, let's go. And then when and someone tries to, to, to try to, you know, interfere with your parenting, penalty on you for interfering in my parenting. She penalties her own sons. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it'd be crazy. If you guys want to see more of of M's talented work, you can look on our YouTube channel right now. We have our uh, when we did our try not to get scared challenge there at Six Flags. I know I got some uh, Devil's uh, Triangle stuff from her in there, and I can guarantee you, if you go watch our screen big video from earlier this year, she is like one of the stars of that video i promise you so we have some really good interactions with her if you want to see her go go pop off uh i guarantee you it's it's a fun watch i literally watched the great gatsby like days before i went to this event and the only song i can hear in my head when editing this video was a little party will never kill nobody it was great unfortunately unfortunately for demons row a little party did kill did somebody kill somebody yeah but... many somebodies maybe <laughs> You know, like a mother and her children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I uh, Again, I just want to thank you so much uh, for coming on the channel. And uh, here's to 23, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited <laughs> to even – I'm just excited to be there as a guest as anything. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. If you guys enjoyed today's show, hit that thumbs up and uh, show – Show M some love. She is very talented out there. She does amazing character work, and I can't wait to see what she brings to life this year. Um, if you guys uh, want to take it a step further, leave her some comments down below telling her how amazing of a job she did. Um,
follow us and subscribe to us here on YouTube with that bell notification. Be aware every time we put up a new video and follow us on our socials at Knights of Horror on Twitter at the Knights of Horror on TikTok and Instagram and at Knights of Horror Gaming on Kick.com. Where we're live streaming every Tuesdays and Thursdays on the channel. Until then, I'm your host, Anthony. That's my guest, M. Margarita's human handler. And we'll see you guys very soon for another episode of the Miles Horror Podcast. Take it easy. Yeah.